welcome students now we are going to discuss multiple choice questions which are helpful for university examinations and for various entrance and competitive examinations in this video multiple choice questions of nmr spectroscopy are solved with explanation so let us start Question one: Which of the following elements show phenomenon of NMR spectroscopy? Options are like this. And in case of NMR spectroscopy, the nuclei of atoms, which are magnetic in nature, they show phenomenon of NMR spectroscopy. And which are non-magnetic in nature, they are not shows phenomenon of NMR spectroscopy. and the magnetic nature depends upon atomic number and atomic mass in case of atoms having even mass number and even atomic number the nuclei of such atoms have spin quantum number is equal to 0 and such nuclei are non magnetic in nature and they are nmr inactive while the nuclei of atoms which have odd mass number and even atomic number they have the spin quantum number greater than 0 they are magnetic in nature they are nmr active and they show phenomenon of nmr spectroscopy in above options option a b and d in that case the atoms have even mass number and even atomic number and therefore the nuclei of such atoms are non magnetic in nature they not shows phenomenon of nmr spectroscopy while in case of 6c13 it has even atomic number and odd mass number and as its spin quantum number is greater than 0 it is magnetic in nature and it shows phenomenon of nmr spectroscopy therefore the correct answer is option c 6C30 Question number 2 Transition from one spin state to another spin state is called Options are like this Dipping, muta rotation, transformation and rotation and transition from one spin state to another spin state with absorption or emission of energy is known as dipping these are the two spin state this spin state is parallel to applied magnetic field and this is the anti parallel to applied magnetic field when transition from one spin state to another spin state takes place then there is absorption or emission of energy takes place and when transition takes place from lower energy to higher energy there is absorption from higher energy to lower energy then there is a emission but that transition in spin state is known as dipping thus the correct answer is dipping question number 3 the nuclear resonance means equivalence between this and this these are the options in case of nuclear magnetic resonance the magnetic nuclei is placed in external magnetic field or applied magnetic field then that nucleus comes under precisional motion having precisional frequency at the same time that nucleus is irradiated with radio frequency light and when the frequency of irradiated light and the precisional frequency of nucleus becomes equal then that nucleus is supposed to be under a resonance thus the nuclear resonance is the state of equivalence between frequency of spinning nucleus that is precisional frequency and the frequency of irradiated light and therefore the correct answer is 
positional frequency of magnetic nucleus and the frequency of irradiated radiations and when the nucleus is under resonance then it absorbs the energy from irradiated radiations and the change in spin state explains thus remember that in case of nuclear resonance there is equivalence between positional frequency of magnetic nucleus and the frequency of irradiated radiation question 4 radiations used in nmr spectroscopy are infrared radiations ultraviolet radiations radio waves or all of these in case of nmr spectroscopy the irradiated light used is of low energy therefore radio waves are used for irradiation thus the correct answer is radio waves number 5 when nuclei of hydrogen atom that is proton placed in applied magnetic field then the number of possible spin orientations are options are 4 2 3 and 1 when the magnetic nuclei is placed in applied magnetic field then the number of possible orientations have the equation 2i plus 1 where i is the spin quantum number in case of hydrogen its spin quantum number is equal to 1/2 therefore 2i plus 1 becomes equal to 2 thus when hydrogen nuclei is placed in applied magnetic field then it shows two orientations one is parallel and another is anti parallel to applied magnetic field thus correct answer is option b that is two question number 6 number of signals in pmr spectra are corresponds to options are like this number of equivalent set of protons concentration of sample solution number of equivalent set of carbons and all of these in case of pmr spectra when molecule is placed in applied magnetic field all the protons are not come under resonance at the same time but the protons which are come under resonance simultaneously are equivalent protons and such protons form a set of protons and the number of signals in pmr spectra corresponds to number of equivalent set of protons therefore its answer is a number of equivalent set of protons question number 7 in dash dash method frequency of irradiated light is kept constant and strength of applied magnetic field is slowly increased till magnetic nucleus come under resonance and the options are like this frequency sweep method field sweep method force sweep method and flow sweep method in case of continuous wave nmr spectrophotometer it works on two basic principle one is frequency sweep method and field sweep method in case of frequency sweep method the applied magnetic field is kept constant and irradiated frequency light that frequency is changed and in case of field sweep method the frequency of irradiated light is kept constant and the applied magnetic field strength is slowly increased thus in case of field sweep method the frequency of irradiated light is kept constant at particular frequency such as 60 megahertz 100 megahertz 
or 300 megahertz etc and one of that frequency is kept constant and the strength of applied magnetic field is slowly increased till magnetic nucleus come under resonance thus for that question the correct answer is hill sweep method Question number 8 dash dash is used as solvent in PMR spectroscopy options are first water b carbon tetrachloride c chloroform and d benzene the PMR spectroscopy deals with study of nuclei of hydrogen atom that is proton thus the solvent used in case of PMR spectroscopy should be a protic in nature that is the solvent should not contain hydrogen atom therefore answer b is the correct answer for this question that is carbon tetrachloride question number 9 dash dash proton requires higher magnetic field strength to come under resonance options are a d shielded b shielded c reactive and d unreactive when organic compound is placed in applied magnetic field then all the protons in the molecule are not come under resonance simultaneously this is because when molecule is placed in applied magnetic field then magnetic field held by the proton is less than applied magnetic field and this is due to induced magnetic field generated by electrons around the proton and in case of shielded proton there is a higher electron density around it and which produces higher induced magnetic field or secondary magnetic field and such type of proton requires higher magnetic field strength to come under resonance which is known as up field resonance thus the correct answer is b that is shielded proton question number 10 dash dash is used as internal standard in pmr spectroscopy the first option is tetramethyl benzene the second trimethyl benzene c tetramethyl silane and d is trimethyl silane and the answer is tetramethyl silane that is tms and this is because this is tetramethyl silane in case of tetramethyl silane these four methyl groups are attached to silicon and all four ch3 group protons are equivalent and that is there are 12 protons which are equivalent and in case of silicon and carbon silicon is less electronegative than carbon therefore all 12 protons are highly shielded and they require highest magnetic field strength to come under resonance and it is observed that protons of other organic compounds come under resonance at lower magnetic field strength than tms therefore tms it is used as internal standard in pmr spectroscopy Question eleven. CH three COO CH three shows how many signals in NMR spectra? Options are one, two, three, and six. In case of CH three COO CH three, that is, in case of methyl acetate, there are two methyl group protons, but these two methyl group protons are not equivalent 
as they have different chemical and electronic environment. In that case, that methyl group it is attached to carbonyl group, while that methyl group it is attached to oxygen atom. And therefore, these two methyl group protons are not equivalent. Therefore, this compound gives two signals in the NMR spectra because number of signals in NMR spectra are corresponds to number of set of protons in the molecule. Thus, correct answer is two. Question number 12. The following compound gives how many signals in NMR spectra? And the options are 3, 2, 6, and 9. In that compound, there are two set of protons. One is methyl group protons and another is phenyl group protons and all methyl group protons are equivalent they form one set of proton and this phenyl group proton forms another set of protons and as there are two set of protons this compound gives two signals in the NMR spectra therefore the correct answer is B that is two signals in NMR spectra Question 13. In a molecule CH3, CH2, CO, OH, which protons are highly deshielded? This is a very simple question. Options are methyl group protons, methylene group protons, COOH group protons, and all of these. And the correct answer is COOH group proton. This is because in case of COOH group proton, that hydrogen it is attached to electronegative oxygen atom. And due to electron withdrawing inductive effect, that OH group proton is highly deshifted. And this is also due to anisotropic effect of carbonyl group. Thus, COOH group proton is highly deshifted. It requires less magnetic field strength to come under resonance. Question 14. The splitting of signal in PMR spectra takes place according to dash dash rule. Options are according to n plus 1 rule, n plus 2 rule, n plus 3 rule or not particular. In case of NMR spectra, the number of split signals is equal to 2ni plus 1 where n is the number of non-equivalent adjacent protons and i is the spin quantum number but in case of hydrogen its spin quantum number is one half therefore 2ni plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 hence in case of pmr spectroscopy the splitting of the signal takes place according to n plus 1 rule Thus, the correct answer is A, that is n plus 1. Question number 15. Coupling between two protons present on adjacent carbon atoms is known as dash dash coupling. Options are geminal, piscinal, virtual, and long range. In case of NMR spectroscopy, due to magnetic interaction between non equal protons, the splitting of the signal takes place. And that magnetic interaction is known as spin spin coupling. And 
if these protons are present on adjacent carbon atoms suppose these are the two non equal protons which are present on adjacent carbon atoms or they are separated by t bonds in that case the magnetic interaction between these two protons is known as vicinal coupling therefore the answer is vicinal in case of geminal coupling the non equivalent protons are present on same carbon atom and they are separated by two bonds question number 16 in nmr spectra of ch3 ch2 ch cl2 the signal of ch2 group proton that is methylene group proton is a singlet b quartet c doublet or d quintet in case of ch3 ch2 ch cl2 that methylene group proton have four non equivalent adjacent protons this methyl group proton and methane group proton are adjacent to methylene group proton and as there are four non equivalent adjacent protons therefore the signal of the ch2 group split into hyolyse this is according to n plus 1 rule and when signal split into five lines that signal is known as quintet therefore the answer is quintet question number 17 the relative intensity of quartet is these are the options and the correct answer is 1 2 3 2 3 2 this is because in case of quartet the population of spin state of three non equivalent adjacent protons is 1 2 3 2 3 2 1 as quartet is obtained when there are three non equivalent adjacent protons and the population of spin state of that three non equivalent adjacent proton is 1 2 3 2 3 2 1 therefore the relative intensity of the quartet is 1 question number 18 the distance between two adjacent peaks within the multiplet is known as a chemical shift b coupling constant c spacing and d all of these this is a multiplet that is signal is splitted into different lines that signal is known as multiplet and in case of multiplet the distance between two lines within the multiplet or distance between two adjacent peaks within the multiplet is constant and that constant is known as coupling constant therefore the correct answer is coupling constant question number 19 the condition for first order splitting is a delta nu by j is greater than 6 b delta nu by j is equal to 0 c delta nu by j is less than 6 and d delta nu by j is equal to 1 and in case of first order splitting the chemical shift difference that is delta nu is 6 times greater than the coupling constant j that is delta nu which is chemical shift difference it is greater than 
six times coupling constant. J is the coupling constant. Therefore, delta nu by J is greater than six. Thus, the correct answer is delta nu by J is greater than six. Such type of spectra is known as first order spectra. Question number 20. In CH3, O, CH2, CH2, O, CH3, the signal height ratio is options are like this and the solution is in this molecule there are two set of protons. One set is of methyl group protons and another is of methylene group protons and there is a, a set of six protons and another is of four protons. And in case of PMR spectroscopy, the area under peak is proportional to number of protons present in the set of protons. And the ratio of protons in this case is 6 to 4. That is 3 to 2. And thus the correct answer is 3 to 2. That is signal height ratio indicates the ratio of protons present in the molecule. Thus, in this video, we discuss 20 simple questions of NMR spectroscopy. Again, we will discuss more number of questions on NMR spectroscopy in the next video. Thank you very much.